All right, in this video, we are going to be continuing our review for the chapter six, part two test. And we are going to do some coding together. The file that you'll need to get started here is refer for test two question, ref, review for test two question one dot Java. It should be on the folder for today. So if you wanna click on that and get the code into Eclipse, right, it should look like this. All right, and once you've got it loaded, um, then we're gonna kinda of code this together. So we've got a bunch of ints, right, uh, in an array called numbers. And I don't know why I put them in order because we're actually gonna be doing linear search, which the one time you'd wanna use linear search is if they're out of order. But anyways, uh, never mind my mistake there. But um, at any rate, um, the code you have to add is in this method called linear search. So what we have in main here is just the array itself. And then you have to write in a method that takes in the array and an int and then say like where it was found. So like nine is found here, which is position zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? So you just have to say where it is found. Okay, so these are sort of test cases to make sure your method works right. All right, so your code will go down here in this um, linear search method. All right, so we've got this coming in, right? We've got the interray coming in and then we've got the target here. So you have to do the code and it returns void. I could have made it return the position where it found it, but I'm just gonna have it print out instead. So you just have to print out like the list does not contain target, or you can print like the, if it is found, you put the number target is found at whatever position. Okay, so I would pause the video and give this a shot before watching the solution. Okay, so basically all we have to do here is do a for loop through our numbers and check one at a time if each position is equal to the target. So I'm gonna do my regular loop of int i equals zero. So we're doing the indexes for numbers and then I would go less than numbers dot length, right? That'll go through all the possible indexes plus plus i. So go up by one each time, okay? And then I just wanna see if it equals. So I wanna see if numbers position uh, i, if the number at the ith position is equal equal to the target, Okay, then we found it, right? So I'm gonna do a sysout print of the, and you could modify this a little bit, but I'm gonna say the number plus the target number was found. I'm gonna go to another line here just to give myself a little more space. At position, and then the position it was found at would be i. We're in the ith position. Okay, so if we find it, we do that. Oftentimes, students will want to do like an else here and say basically, hey, we didn't find it. But that's wrong because we would be checking only one position, right? We'd only be checking the first spot to see if it's equal to target and then saying we, we found it or we didn't, right? So we know we haven't found it once we've checked all the positions right, for the target. And that doesn't happen until the for loop ends down here, right? So this is where you're gonna do your print that you actually found the number that you want. Okay, so then I'm gonna put down here the number plus target plus was not found. You could even put a sorry, All right? Um, and so there's kind of a problem with this, but I'm going to run it. I'm going to see if you can figure out what's wrong, uh, but I'm going to run it here and I'll kind of see the error too. So according to these directions, it should find the first two, but then it should not find the 195. So if I run it, it says number nine was found at position five, but then it says it's not found, sorry. And it says the 199 was found at position 99, but then it also says it's not found. Okay, so... Um, this is a situation where we really haven't encountered it much yet before. So if you didn't get this, not a big deal. But basically, um, there's a couple ways around it. We could do a Boolean to track if we find the target or not and set the Boolean to be like false, right? So we could do Boolean found or like is found and set it to be false, right? And then if we do find it, then we set is found to be true. And then we only run this if it's not found. So we could do if we not is found, right? If that variable is false, then we want to print it out. 
Okay, and that would probably that would fix our our issue. All right, then we get the messages that we want. Okay, so again, that's using the is found variable. Um, another route to do this, which I think is actually probably better, is you can make the method stop running once you find what you want. So basically here, when we find what we want, um, we can just type return with nothing. Okay, so this is a void method. So I'm just going to return and then put nothing, and that'll make the method stop. So if we ever hit here, if we ever found it, we'll do the print statement, and then we'll just stop the method. Okay, and then we don't even need this is found variable because this line of code at the end, this this out print at the end, will only happen um, if we don't ever hit this return statement. Okay, so that'll function in the exact same way, right? And and the kind of the reason why I like that better, even though it's weird to return like just do return here, is it it stops the code from running once we find what we want, right? So we're not wasting like extra computer processing power by continuing to search for a number that we already found, right? Once we found it, just stop, do return, right? The way we did it, the other wet method would go all the way through every time, um, and that's a little less efficient than just stopping once we find it. Okay, that is it. Thank you for watching.